I sold my service-based marketing agency back in February 2024, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I turned my service-based agency into a sellable asset, how I found buyers, and eventually exited all inside of six months. Now, if you know anything about SMMA, you know it is notoriously difficult to sell because there is no software or intellectual property. Essentially, all you're selling is your paying customer list, your systems and procedures, and the fulfillment team that goes along with it. For context, I've been running my agency for six years leading up to the acquisition, making about $40,000 per month, nearly $500,000 per year. I've broken this video up into three steps. The first is systemizing, how to turn your agency into a sellable asset. The second is listing, which is where and how you list your company for sale and what to include in that listing. And the third is closing, which is obviously super important. This is how to negotiate contract terms and get paid. First up is systemizing, which is really just creating a standard way of doing things that does not waver from one client to the next. So all of your onboarding, reporting, communication, and fulfillment should be the exact same no matter the client or the project that you're working on. And all that information should be organized in the same place that anyone on the team can access or reference. This is where a project management tool is really going to come in handy. Personally, I built our entire business inside of Notion, which made it infinitely easier to manage and eventually sell. And then I built a series of automations that works with Notion to automate some of our more tedious tasks. This is the exact Notion template that I used for nearly two years leading up to the acquisition. And honestly, I don't know if we would have been able to sell without this level of organization and automation. For example, anytime a client completed an onboarding form in Google Forms, it would automatically add all of the onboarding information as individual fields inside of the client's CRM. Or when a customer made a payment in our invoice on Stripe, it would add an action item inside of our workflow, assign it to a person, give it a priority, and a due date. We also use this to store our internal documents. So things like our video SOPs, our tech stack with login information, our referral partners, people, time off requests, our org chart, basically everything that you need to run a service-based agency, we held inside of Notion. And this, honestly, guys, made it so much easier to scale. Like even something as simple as employee onboarding, where we would assign different team members that are joining the team to various video SOPs. So they already knew the instructions and how we fulfilled services for our clients. Or something like our client onboarding integrating with the CRM so all the details are added to that customer's profile immediately. Like this organization is really what other agencies are going to be looking for because it gives you a clear vision of how the company is managed inside of a simple dashboard. And Notion is super popular. It integrates with monday.com and ClickUp. It, it's probably one of the best options to manage and grow your agency. I did turn my company's internal Notion board into a template. So if you did want a copy, it is for sale in the link below. Next up is listing. So once you've systemized and automated as many components as you can, you can start to prepare your company for sale. There are honestly dozens of components to creating a good listing and they probably each deserve their own video, but I'm gonna start with these four because I found it had the biggest impact for me. These are useful softwares, price determination, unique selling proposition, and negotiating client contracts. First up on useful softwares is acquire.com. They have a massive directory of agencies filtered by price, by profit, by MRR, by asking price by a whole bunch of different variables. Uh, it's a massive di directory, uh, and this is definitely a great place to be listing your company for sale. Next up is SaaS Sync, and this integrates with your QuickBooks and I believe your Stripe account. And it's essentially just a way for buyers to verify your funds because they can see all your financial activity and it charts it out over the months or years that you've been in business. So it's just an easy way for a buyer to see that you're legitimate, to verify your funds, and to really just see all of your financial activity. And the third one is Chart Mogul. It kind of does the same sort of thing. And I believe that this actually is required in the acquire listing. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I remember that either SaaSync or Chart Mogul was required. Uh, but either way, the more information that you can give your buyers, the better likelihood that you're going to have a positive first conversation and push forward to the LOI stage. All right, now let's talk about price determination. This is obviously a big topic, and there are two common ways to do it as an agency, either a multiple of revenue or a multiple of profit. Multiple of revenue, it's pretty common to get between a 0.8 to a 3.5 times your last 12-month revenue. So if you made $500,000 in the previous 12 months, 
your asking price would realistically be anywhere between 750,000 to 1.2 million. Multiple of profit has a wider range, typically between a four times to a 10 times last year's profit, but there's a big variable that affects this, which is always owner's draw. Since agencies are cash flow businesses, the owner will typically take a lot of money out of the company, which will make the profit margin look much lower than it actually is. So in my case, the profit margin in QuickBooks looks like 30%, but when you remove owner's draw and bonuses, the actual profit is closer to 70%. Listing on a multiple of revenue is probably gonna be more effective. I'd suggest listing anywhere between 1.2 to 1.8X last 12 month revenue. The next step when listing is clearly communicating your unique selling proposition. There are clearly a lot of agencies for sale and making sure you're clearly communicating the type of customer you work with is really gonna help a buyer figure out if you're the right fit. When a potential buyer is evaluating your business, they're gonna think about how easily they can attract your target customer, or if it's an existing agency, which is more than likely, they'll be thinking about how your current customer base will mix well with their customers and how your form of delivery and fulfillment will blend in with their current systems and operations. So communicating your customer avatar, your customer acquisition method, your retention, and importantly, the project management tool that you're using to maintain your entire organization, that's gonna be really important and it will show the buyer a level of organization that you have that is beyond what other agencies are typically producing. The final step here is securing long-term contracts with your existing clients. This relates to the churn metrics that your buyers will see inside of SaaS Sync and ChartMogul. Let's say, for example, that your annual churn is 16%. In other words, that means that an average customer sticks with you for 10 months. So if that customer is paying $5,000 per month, the contract value is $50,000 over a 10 month period. But if you're able to secure a 12 month contract, then that contract now becomes valued at $60,000, which increases your asking price by that $10,000 times the multiple that you're looking for on the multiple of revenue. In other words, if you can get a contract signed for 12 months per customer, you're gonna increase the contract value and increase the multiple of revenue that you'll be able to demand. Securing long-term client contracts for an agency is not always easy. It's probably better to start with a three month quarterly contract with the customers and then work them up to a six or 12 month. But even having that three month contract, it's gonna show any prospective buyer that the customer has confidence in you and your ability to serve and their likelihood of churning is going to be much lower than a customer that's on a month to month rolling contract. Part three of the video is closing the deal. And this typically starts with fielding calls. When you're speaking with prospective buyers, keep in mind that this is someone that you'll probably have to work with for a few months at minimum. So making sure that your personalities align is actually one of the most important things. This may very well be the guy or girl that takes over all communication with your customers. So if you don't get a good feeling about them immediately, your clients probably won't either. On the call, I go full transparency mode and I show them my Notion, my QuickBooks, and my Stripe account so they can see the exact inner workings of the company and how all the financials are moving. And remember, this is not a one-sided conversation. You should be asking them lots of questions about their ideal client, how they find customers, and what their average retention metrics are because ultimately you wanna make sure that your customers are going towards the right agency. After a few successful calls, you might be asked to sign an LOI, which is a letter of intent to purchase. This is a great next step, but it typically means that you can only sign one LOI at a time and you can't be fielding other offers. So make sure that the expiry date of the LOI is a maximum of two weeks so that if that company decides not to purchase, you can move on and continue fielding other prospects. Once you pass the letter of intent stage, you can move on to contract terms. Most contracts will have a non-compete. The question is time frame. I would say two years at an absolute maximum, but this will depend on the value of your business and what your asking price is. In my case, I didn't sign a non-compete. I did, however, sign a non-solicitation for employees and past clients, which is very typical. You might also be asked to sign a non-disclosure, which should be discussed at length because at some point there will likely be a press release or a social media post related to this. So you wanna make sure that that is included in the non-disclosure and you're not breaking any contract terms. As a side note to contract terms, agencies often have what's called key man risk, meaning you are the one either delivering the service or the person speaking to the clients. So the easiest way to mitigate this risk for the buyer is to create standard operating procedures, such as your video SOPs, client onboarding and employee onboarding. Next up is the type of purchase, which is usually either asset or share purchase. There are benefits and drawbacks of both, but an asset purchase means the acquiring firm 
doesn't assume any of the debts or legal responsibilities associated with the corporation. This is most common and it's the type of sale that I underwent. And the benefit here is that since you still own the shares of the corporation, you can still incur regular business expenses like your phone bill or your QuickBooks account that you can expense through the company. A share purchase on the other hand can be a little more complicated for a few reasons. First, you have to prove that you don't have any loans or debt against the company, which isn't too hard. But the second one is proving that you don't have any aggravated customers or legal disputes held against the company. The benefit of a share purchase is it usually has tax advantages depending on the country and state that you're in, but the buyer will typically look for general liability and professional insurance to make sure that they aren't liable for any pending legal disputes. In either contract, make sure that you exclude physical equipment from the sale of the business. You probably would have expensed your phone, computer, microphone, camera, anything in the office as a business expense that you probably don't want to sell with the company. This typically won't affect your asking price, but it is important to make it as a line item so you aren't left empty handed at the end of the sale. Let's talk transitioning to a new owner. It's unlikely this is going to happen in a day. It will probably be spread out over a period of time. Unlike software where you can hand over all technical assets at once, an agency requires a relationship transfer which can take months and needs to be carefully managed. In my case, our start date was February 1st, 2024, when we transitioned all hard assets that we could over to the owner, but the relationship transfer took about six months. Next up is the payout schedule, and this is obviously super important, and it's very common in an agency for the payout schedule to be based on client retention, employee retention, and revenue retention, and that was exactly the case for me. In my contract, I was paid 33% upfront, with the remaining 67% spread out over 18 equal monthly payments, with two variable bonuses and a key man replacement bonus. The variable bonuses were dependent on revenue and they were set at the six and 18 month mark. This was really smart for the buyer to include in the contract because it kept our incentives aligned and it kept me pushing revenue into the business. The buyer also included a revenue retention clause whereby if our revenue dropped by 25%, then my payouts would pause indefinitely until we brought revenue back up. Now, obviously, if you're the seller, this is not ideal as you won't have a direct impact on revenue when you're removing from the company. However, there's a little give and take here and having these kind of safety nets on the buyer side gives them a lot of confidence and helped us get the deal across the line much faster. This is a very surface level of how to transform your agency into a sellable asset and break the golden handcuffs that is running an agency. If you'd also like to scale your agency to $500,000 per year and get acquired, you can join my school community below where I show you exactly how I did it.